For this video I had to go deep in nature. Okay, it wasn't that deep. I made an aquatic ecosystem in a jar from this pond. But it isn't this ugly jar that is cool. It is what I got inside. This is the apex predator of the pond. But of course, it's still blurred right now. Because of the suspense. Um, okay, let's just move on. To make this ecosphere, you need a big ass jar like this one. Wait, I'll give you something for scale. Now you have a sense of dimension. It's time to make this thing. First, I need to get through this very dense jungle to reach the edge of the pond. What I'm putting myself through to make content for you guys. Made it. Does anyone know if a Samsung S22 is waterproof? Oh well, too late now. There is some movement, so let's hope we get something. First, we need to get some soil from the bottom of the pond. Yep, that soil. I know I make it look easy to put dirt in a jar, but as you can see, it's not that easy. Or I'm just dumb. I'll let you decide. While I was putting more dirt in the jar, I felt something stinging my leg. Apparently, I was standing right in an ant's nest. And as a biologist, I can tell you, ants don't like feet. Or at least not my feet. I also saw this larvae of a ladybug. That's the leaf that is shaking, not me. And right next to it was a ladybug. With an itchy butt apparently. But let's get back to our ecosphere. I tried to collect some more soil, which was easier said than done. But eventually I got it and put it nice and cleanly in the jar. Second step is to collect water. And that is already the last step. There are so little, even I can remember them. Damn it, I forgot about step 3. Put water in jar. Now we're really done. The water in this jar will clear up in the next few days. It's almost time to take it home, but not before. The mission report. I ended up with 5 mosquito bites, 7 ant stings or bites, and there are probably 3 ticks latching onto my balls right now. But was it worth it? Hell no. But at least I already saw some movement in the bottom of the jar. This is a water scorpion, and later in this video I'm hand feeding it. Let me be clear, I'm not feeding it my hand. I don't want you to be disappointed when you get to that point. Two days later, the jar has cleared up. It looks like there's not much movement, but there is life inside. Let's take a closer look. Of course, just my luck. A stupid mosquito larvae. It is scraping off the algae that is growing on the jar. But it looks like it's got a friend. That is a shrimp. Let's see where it's going. No, it isn't having a stroke. It is filtering the water for detritus and organic matter. That is what they eat. I saw something else moving too. And the shrimp was also interested. I have no idea what this is. I'm not a biologist. Oh, wait, I am. Damn it. It looks like some kind of ostracot, but I'm not sure. Shrimps better get into hiding because there are predators on the move. And it is not our apex predator, the water scorpion. Some of you are not going to like this one. This is a leech. Is there anyone else that kind of finds these fascinating? Or are you normal? But don't worry, they're harmless. That is the part they get you with by the way. This one is looking around for something to eat. For the guys, zip up your pants because it wants some shrimp. This one is getting close. Run shrimp, run. I mean swim. This one was lucky it could hide on that stick. Now would be a very good time for that shrimp to get out of there. Or you could get closer to the predator. Sounds like a plan. I think this shrimp got a dead witch. Because what he is about to do is not very smart. That one is lucky to escape with its life. Leave a like for this badass. I guess the leech was too busy imitating an elephant's trunk. But I'm probably the only one that thinks it looked like that. Since the shrimp escaped, it's looking for something else to eat. And then I finally spotted something I did know. This is a Salus aquaticus, or a freshwater isopod. I'm such a great biologist for knowing this. As you can see, there isn't too much life in this jar, 
and I think I know why. It isn't because of our apex predator, which I'm still going to feed later, but it's because of these animals we saw swimming in the pond earlier. These are water boatmen, and they are the loudest animals relative to size. They can produce up to 99 decibels by, and I shit you not, rubbing their penis against their abdomen. That explains why there are so little animals in the jar. I wouldn't want to live with an animal that's making sound with its tongue either. For the guys out there, don't even think about it, it doesn't work. But let's get back to our apex predator. This water scorpion is too big for the jar, so I'm giving it a tank for its own. I'm also probably going to release it in a few weeks. Most of these animals overwinter on land, so I don't think it's a great idea to keep them in a tank. What do you guys think? Water scorpions are also called toe biters, because they often bite people's hands. No, I'm kidding, they bite toes, that would be a stupid name otherwise. And I'm saying bite, not sting, because that thing on its back is a breeding tube, not a stinger. They get you with that thing on their face, because they don't like putting their breeding tube up people's feet, which is understandable. I'm going to use this old tank for the water scorpion. I agree, it looks nasty, but it has been outside and collecting rainwater for a while. This means the conditions of the water and the bacteria inside will be similar to the pond where the water scorpion lives. That is why I'm only replacing part of the water. The bag is to prevent the sand from stirring up. Hey, I'm not as stupid as I look. Wait, you don't know what I look like. Trust me, I look stupid. I'm collecting some water from this reservoir because it contains mosquito larvae. They are a great food source for the water scorpion. And for each other apparently. Okay, these are being fed to the water scorpion first, giving them a taste of their own medicine. The water scorpion needs some plants for oxygen and hiding space. They are ambush hunters. This means they hide and basically wait till the food swims in their mouth. I tried this once, unfortunately it doesn't work. Water scorpions also like to spend some time on land. That is why I'm also giving it a big stone, some sticks and some wood to rest on. Close up of my hand. Nice. Last but not least, some duckweed. This got best of both worlds. Ducks and we... Nope, not good. I managed to separate the water scorpion. This really is the apex predator of the pond, and you will see a demonstration in a minute. They even can eat fish, and some of them are even able to catch snakes. There it goes, I hope it likes its temporary home. I let him settle in for a few hours, and then it was time to feed him. I'm feeding him a mosquito larvae. I think nobody is going to feel bad for that. Doesn't it look cute while it's stuck in its prey dry? Of course, it hasn't eaten enough with such a small larvae. So I'm feeding it something else. A fly. It looks like he was still hungry. It is now paralyzing the fly, and then it eats it. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Nope, can't do that. That sounds really stupid. Just like if you enjoyed the video and otherwise, don't. Don't click off yet, please watch the video in the end screen. Thank you to everyone that watched. And thank you to all patrons, every new patron gets a spirit animal. I think you'll like this video next.